All of the veterans, everybody. We love Al. Steve. Hi, Steve. So I want to thank you all for being here. It's, uh, it's been an amazing journey for me and for you and for all of us. We're taking our country back. The level of love, the level of everything, everything. When I go around to places, it's always like this. It's always full, whether it's an arena or whether it's a basketball court, whatever it is, it's always full. And I have even more people pouring in right now as we speak. Should we wait 20 or 25 minutes? No, right? So uh, I just, uh, I really appreciate it. It's been, it's been so incredible. So we had the debate the other night, and the debate was good. The debate was good. Who, who watched the debate? Who? So this is a slightly political crowd. You know what they always say, the pundits, who really don't know a damn thing about what They're saying, well, do you think they'll vote for Trump? Now, some people, we had a couple of cases in Lowell and different places. They were, yeah, sit down, everybody, sit down. Sit down. Very comfortable. It's more comfortable. Oh, see, they can't sit down. We needed extra space, so we took chairs out of the room. But we had, thank you very much. A nice guy. So we have a lot of different places, and it's, it's just incredible. But we were in Lowell, and the people waiting, some people in the, remember the freezing day? They're waiting five, six, and seven hours. And then the pundits would say, do you think they're going to vote? They stand up for seven hours outside in the cold, I think people are going to vote. And I think, you know, there's actually, there's actually a theory that for me, you know, it works both ways. But for me, and there's a big theory out there, that the polls are fantastic, but that we're going to do even better than the polls because people are, you know, we're going to outperform the polls. And I, I actually think, I actually think that's uh, the way it is. So we had the debate. A lot of things were determined in the debate. It was very interesting. You know, I've never debated before. I do jobs. I create jobs. As politicians, it's all talk, no action. It's all the same. But we, uh, we, did a, we had a great time, and a lot of good things came out of the debate. And uh, we're going to talk about those things. And what I told my people, I said, because this is sort of a very intimate group, even though it's a lot of people, what we'll do is we'll ask some questions a little bit later on. Do we want to do that? OK? I like it. I like it. I mean, to me, it's interesting. I don't have to just speak for an hour and then get off. I like when I get your questions, and I learn from the questions. So it's one of those things. So I'm just going to go over a couple of things. New polls came out. Trump is killing. We're just killing. Um, this is, I tell you the polls because I don't want you wasting your time. Because if we weren't, it's like not as exciting, right? And everybody, every one of my competitors say, I shouldn't mention the polls. But that's because I'm in first place. From the day we started, virtually, we've been in first place. So anyway, Wall Street Journal, NBC, Trump has 33 percent. Second place is 19 or 20. The uh, CBS, New York Times, 35 percent. Second place, I'll tell you what, you get down into the teens and low teens, and we're in great shape. Uh, OAN, we have uh, 41 to 20. 41, that's a lot. I, I take 41. I always say, I would take 41 even if we had three people. But when you think we have 41, and we have like, I think when the poll was for a week ago, it's probably 14, 15 people. You know, they're dropping out one by one by one. I love to see them drop out. It's like, right? My carpenter. This is my carpenter over there. Uh, the Reuters poll, great poll, 42. We've been traveling between 40 and 42, but 42 to 12. 12. It's a big lead. We got we to gotta go a long way to blow that kind of a lead. You know, that's one of those you ever, uh, sportsmen, the golfers. They say, Johnny, he's just looking for the clubhouse. I'm looking for the clubhouse. I wish the election were like today. I, would, I really do. I wish the election were today. Now, in some countries, you can do that. You call the election. If I were president right now, I'd be calling the election. I want the election to be immediately. So anyway, so what's happened is we have, and it's a day, it's, this is Martin Luther King Day, right? So we, have, we like that. We like that. So in South Carolina, one other, 35% to 15%. And in Iowa, CNN, 33% to 20 I'm leading, by the way. You know, you don't hear that. 
They never quote, they never quote the, uh, the CNN poll. They always like to quote other polls, where they're lo closer or whatever. But uh, we're doing, I think we're going to do very well. I think Iowa's going to be a tremendous success. We're up there all the time. I'm going there tomorrow. I'm going there the next day. I'm coming back here. Uh, you're going to be, you're going to see me so much in New Hampshire. You're going to be so tired of me. You're going to say, keep that guy out. Keep him out of here. But we have to win. You know, we have to win. I mean, it's sort of interesting because I look at the different candidates and uh, I'm starting to spend money only because I feel guilty. I, honestly, you know, you have a, ho a poll like that where you're 33 and 42 to 12. I see one 42 to 12. And yet somebody would say, why are you spending money? I have to spend because, number one, I don't want to take any chances. And number two, I do feel guilty a little bit. Uh, you look at Bush, he spent $69 million. 69. He's in favor of Common Core. I'm totally against Common Core, by the way. You got to be against. A guy like him, he's weak on immigration. So I say, how do you win when you favor Common Core? He wants your children to be educated through Washington, through the bureaucrats, who are making lots of money, $250,000. That's not going to happen in New Hampshire. It's not going to happen in Iowa. It's not going to happen in South Carolina. But it just doesn't make sense. And then, to top it off, very weak. Remember, they come in as an act of love, right? They come across the border as an act of love. You can't do that. So, so doesn't work. So we'll see. But he spent $69 million, and I've spent essentially nothing. I mean, almost nothing. And that's what we need for our country. We need, as an example, right? That's the kind of thing, right? We need, like, as an example on education, all very important. Everybody here believes in education strongly. And we're number one in the world in spending per pupil by far, right? By far. We're so far ahead of everybody else in terms, not, number two isn't even close, okay. But we're number 28 in terms of results. So we, we're number 28 in the world as a country, number 28 in the world, but we're number one in spending. So in the campaign, I'm reversed. I'm number one by far and I've spent the least. And they actually had a graph the other day in the Wall Street Journal, which was interesting. It was a big circle, and they had the money spent and the result. And they said, Trump is least money spent, so I'm least here, and best result. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? And I love telling that story, because that's what we need. But the problem is, I'm going to start spending some money, because, you know, I'm 37 million under budget. Can you believe that? I thought I'd have, it's true. And here's the other thing, and this is so important. Tell your friends, I'm spending my own money. I'm spending my own money. I'm not relying on the lobbyists and the special interests and all the guys that are going to tell your local politician or whoever's running to do what I say to do. I gave you $5 million, Hillary, and I want you to do what I say to do. That's what happens. That's what happens. Believe me, that's what happens. Uh, Hillary's raised a tremendous amount of money from special interests and from lobbyists. Uh, Jeb, every one of them. Every one of them. Every one of them. They've raised a lot of money, and they're like puppets. Believe me, they're like puppets. You know, I always tell the story about the Ford plant. They'll never do the right thing because somebody will have given them money, either an owner or a shareholder or a lobbyist or a special interest, and you'll, they'll never do the right thing. I talk about Nabisco. They'll never do it. Nabisco is moving to Mexico. Ford is moving a big plant to Mexico. All of these things. Nabisco is taking their big plant out of Chicago. They're moving it into Mexico. So what are we going to do? We're not going to have any more Oreos, which is good. Which is good. Which is very good. So just a couple of things before we do some questions. But I, it just we have to get it off our minds. You look at this Iran deal, where $150 billion we get our prisoners back, but they get far more back than we do. They get 14 off Interpol, which is serious people. These are seriously bad dudes on Interpol. You know, these are serious bad. They get access to oil. They can sell oil. They get access to free money. They get everything. We get nothing. We get nothing. And this is what happens. And then last week, what did we see last week? The sailors. Ten sailors, they get what happened? Now, how bad was that, when you think? Do you, do you ever see anything? So they're put in a begging position with their hands up, guns to their head, over nothing. Instead of, let's fix your engine and get you out of here, a big deal. They had a thug screaming orders to them. I guess you heard that. 
And we just can't let this, we can't let this stuff happen with our country. We're being scoffed at, we're being laughed at. Now, you get back down to trade, and you look at what's happening and how we're being sucked dry, and the people of New Hampshire, and the people, frankly, of New England, do we love Tom Brady, by the way? Do we love him? Right? Huh? Is he the greatest? You see the other game? It's so nice. You know, I have friends, they own teams, and Bob Kraft is a great owner, and you have a great coach in Belichick. But, you know, I just watch bing, 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 touchdown. Boom, boom. Then I have other friends, they have quarterbacks. Oh, yeah, yeah, interception, problems, fumble. Brady, you're lucky to have Brady. He's my friend, but you're lucky. To have. So, so we've got to do some things. You know, one of the bad parts about the deal is you're going to now have, what, $150 billion for four people. You're going to have a lot of things happening that are bad. So this morning, I understand they did three kidnappings in, uh, in Iraq. Now they're going to say, oh, give us billions, give us billions. You know, once you do this, and once you allow this to happen, it's a very, very bad thing going on. It's very bad. And when they see the weakness and the stupidity of our leaders, it's not a good situation, folks. We have to change. And we can change fast. We can change gears like you wouldn't believe. We're going to make our military so strong, so powerful, nobody's going to ever mess with us again. We're going to work with the vets. You know, the vets are taking — and you have so many vets up here. The vets are going to be taken care of great as opposed to poorly. Right now, stand up, Al. Stand up. This guy has been with me. Al has been with me from the beginning. Oh, I hope we win, Al, because I'm never forgetting you, man. Every time I make a speech — and he's there really representing the vets, and he's a powerful guy, and they love him, and I love him, too. But he — stand up, Al. Just stand up by yourself. Right? Stand up. Turn around, Al. See how handsome he is? Yeah, appreciate it, Al. He's at so many of my rallies, just about all of them. And he's here not for me. He's here because he loves the vets, and he really is a great representative, and we should all have — we should all be so lucky, I will tell you that. But we're going to take care of our military. We're going to take care of our vets. We're going to get rid of Obamacare. It's going to be gone. It's going to be terminated. And it's going to be replaced with much less expensive, much better health care. We're going to get a much — I don't know if you notice. I mean, I'm sure you do, but the premiums, right? 25 percent up. 35 percent up, 45 percent up, deductibles through the roof so you can never use it. I mean, unless you get hit by a total tractor or something, you can't use it. No, the deductibles are so high. I get more complaints about the deductibles than I get about the, the increase, because you can't use it. There's nothing to use. You got to be — I mean, literally, you have to be dead. It's, uh, it's a very bad thing. So Obamacare is going to be repealed and replaced, and that's going to be it. Amazing. We're going to have borders, and the borders are going to be strong borders. And people are going to come into the country legally. They're going to come in legally. And we're going to build a wall, folks. We're going to build a wall. And, you know, you have tremendous problems. You have tremendous problems with the drugs in this area. It's amazing to me. When I come to New Hampshire, I hear more about the drug problem and the addiction and all of the drugs pouring in than I do most other places. I don't even understand why. But it's one of the most important things. And that wall is going to stop so much of it. And then we're going to help the people that are so addicted that they can't. Because I, I speak with parents, and their children are in bad shape, and they're really addicted. It is really, really a big thing to get off. It's hard. The easiest way to get off is to never start. It's like me. I never smoke. I never smoke. If you don't smoke, it's easy not to smoke. If you do smoke, I have friends, they, they, they smoke. They, they're always giving up cigarettes. They're always giving it up. For 25 years, the guy's been giving up cigarettes. But if you never start, and we have to get the kids not to start, and the people generally not to start, the ones that are already hooked, we got to get them help, and we're going to do a lot of things to help them as, as much as we can. And, We'll try and get that all. But I, I know a lot of people in New Hampshire, their children are hooked. And we're going to work — we're going to work like hell to get that — to get them unhooked, because we have to. And the best way 
The best thing we can do, though, for the rest, we got to keep them out of here. And one of the reasons we keep them out is strong, strong borders, okay? And, you know, I, I say, all of a sudden, the other day, I heard somebody saying, we're going to build a wall. I said, where did that come from? Nobody ever said that before but me. But they like the way it sounds. They have no idea where to begin. They have no idea how to do it. Whereas with me, it's easy. That's like easy. When you build buildings, like I build buildings, believe me, walls are easy. No windows, no nothing, precast concrete, going very high. Let's see about a little higher than that. It's pretty high ceiling in here, but we'll go a little higher than that. You ever see the walls they have now? They're this high, and they have ramps. And the ramps, and the Jeep goes right over the top, loaded up with drugs. They go sell the drugs, they come back with cash. Not a good deal. It's not a good deal. We also have a problem with trade. I know the greatest dealers in the world, the greatest absolute businessmen. Carl Icahn endorsed me. Many of the other ones want to endorse me. They will be very soon. We're actually getting a big endorsement on Tuesday. It's going to be a lot of fun, but we're getting a great endorsement on Tuesday. Something big is going to happen. But now we're getting a lot of people that want to endorse. You know, it's amazing. All of a sudden, they're saying, oh, wait a minute. Trump is beating Hillary in the polls. And Trump is looking pretty good. And all of a sudden, everybody wants to endorse. People that sort of didn't know you were around, you know, they were going with the establishment stuff. The establishment's not working, folks. You just have to take a look at what's happened to the country. Establishment is not working. Nobody knows the politicians better than I do. Believe me, it's not going to work. It's not going to take us to the promised land. That I can tell you. So we are going to get some unbelievable endorsements over the next little while. And I've never been a huge fan of endorsements. I always think it's the person much more so the endorsements. But we have a couple coming up that are really fantastic, one in particular, which we love. So one of the things I want to talk just quickly about is trade. And then we're going to questions. Uh, trade. China is making $500 billion a year. We have a deficit. Is that trade? That's not trade. That's being foolish. That's being stupid. That's robbery. I often say that. I often say, what China, and I get along great with China. The biggest bank in the world is a tenant to one of my buildings from China. I sell condos to China. The Bank of America building in San Francisco, one of the great buildings of the world, got that through China. I mean, I have a great relationship with China. I've made a lot of money with China. We can make money with China, too but we don't have the right people representing us. We have the wrong people. We have people that don't have a clue. They don't have a clue. And China's good, and Mexico's good. They're great, but their leaders are too smart for our leaders. Our leaders don't have any idea what's happening. And with China, somebody shouted out, robbery, robbery. Honestly, it's the greatest theft that has ever taken place in the history of the world, what China has done to this country. Thousands, and I mean, when you say thousands, millions of jobs have been lost. Millions. Millions of jobs. Thousands and thousands of factories and manufacturing plants have closed because of what's going on. And then they make the stuff and they sell it in, and there's no tax, no nothing. But when you make your product in New Hampshire or anywhere else and you want it to go to China, you can't get it in there. You can't get it in. They won't take it. And if they do take it, they charge you a lot of tax. Believe me, and I'm really aware of it. Nobody knows it better. than You know what I'm talking about, sir. Is that right? Stand up. Because you know. Because you've been there. Yeah. And, and we make better product. That's right. Hey, do you remember? Somebody brought this up the other day. Do you remember? Some of you are too young for this stuff. But some of us, unfortunately, are old enough that we remember it. It used to say proudly, made in America or made in the USA, right? You don't see it anymore. And then you'd have tags, made in Japan, and that was the cheap stuff. That was the bad stuff. That was the cheap stuff. It would say made in Japan, and everyone would say, oh, made in Japan. But we used to have made in America, made in the USA, and w that was an unbelievable tag. We don't have that. Do they have that anymore? I don't even see it anymore. It doesn't say made. We're going to put made in the USA. We're going to put made in America. We're going to have it back. So here's what's happened. Trust me, the, the trade is going to be so good. I'll take a Carl Icahn. I'll take some of these guys that are the best in the world. I'll say, check out China, please, trade agreement. They will be so – they don't want money. They just want to do something. You know, believe it or not, these people love the country. It's a different – they're very rich. They don't want salaries. They don't want anything. They want to help. 
And it's so easy for them. It's like second nature. They love it. For them, it's a game. And they love the country, but it's a game. And there won't be any more China making $500 billion. Think of it. A trade deficit of $500 billion? What kind of a deal is that? Then you hear our president, our trade partner. What kind of a partner? I don't want a partner like that. We got to get it to neutralize, to evenize, and maybe we can even make something if we're really smart. Watch, watch what happens. Okay. Because we have the best people in the world. Now, what happened is when Paris was so horribly hit, all of a sudden, my poll numbers went up 11 points, remember? Because everyone thinks that Trump is going to be tougher and sharper and all that. And I, believe me, I am. Trust me, I am. But all of a sudden, my poll numbers went, and that's when they went into the 40s. And I didn't know. I said, what happened? And they said, Paris. I said, what happened in Paris? And it was a problem that I've been talking about, radical Islamic terrorism. And you know what? We have a president that won't even mention the term. He won't talk about it. And unless you talk, well, unless you talk about it, Unless, now, you, here's the problem with booing. The press will turn that around and say, Trump got booed at the event. He did not boo to, no, because they are the most dishonest people on earth, okay? See that booing? I love to hear that booing, because that means you agree with me. But they'll turn around and say, do you know that Trump got booed today? Oh, oh. And I'll say, I didn't get booed. It was, right? It was like a love fest. I said, we have a love fest. But oh, they're dishonest. Thank you. So nice. Thank you. Thank you. So great. All right. Well, now they'll have a hard time saying it, but they'll figure a way to do it anyway. Okay, these people, they are bad people, let me tell you. So, a couple of things. We're going to solve trade. Trade's going to be great. But it changed because I announced on June 16th, and almost from the beginning, we've been number one. We've been number one in every poll. Now we're number one by far on virtually every poll. But almost from the beginning. But you know, when I announced, I was talking about trade, I was talking about Obamacare, I was talking about all these different things that we're going to do. But all of a sudden, I started saying, you know, we're going to start talking heavy into security, not just the border. We're going to be really talking about security. And we're going to be talking about ISIS because we have to blow them off the face of the earth. No, we have to. We have to. And I was against the war. I tell you what, it's, uh, you know, I, I say it because it's a, you know, I have to think in terms of vision when you vote for somebody. But the truth is, I was against the war. I said, you're going to destabilize the Middle East and all. But then the way we left was so bad, where Obama gets up and he announces the day that he's leaving. So the enemy says, really? They pull back, wait till we leave, and now they, they're going to town. And we don't have Iraq. Iran is taking over Iraq. I said, you're going to destabilize. So Iran not only is getting the great deal with $150 billion plus they'll be able to do whatever they want with the nukes. They can buy the nukes. They don't have to do anything with the kind of money they have. But they're taking over Yemen, right? They're going to take over Syria. They're taking over, most importantly, in a sense, they're taking over Iraq. Iraq has the second largest oil reserves in the world. So I used to say they made a great deal for the 150 billion. That's peanuts because they're taking over Iraq. They've been after Iraq forever, forever. They'd fight with Iraq. They were the same. Boom, boom, boom. They'd fight for years, then they'd rest. Then they'd fight, then they'd rest. They couldn't get 10 feet. They'd go, the other would go. That's the way it was. Now, we, they're gonna, they just walked in. We decapitated them and we left. And the way we got out was so foolish. And you can just imagine General George Patton or General MacArthur talking about this stuff and going on television shows and talking to announcers as generals and what we're doing and what our... I mean, we want to be unpredictable, folks. We have to be unpredictable. We're so predictable. We have people telling radio announcers what we're going to do. We have a president that says when we're leaving. We have a president that sent about two months ago 50 soldiers over, our finest, sent 50 soldiers over to Iraq and to Syria and what did he do? He announced we're sending 50 soldiers. Now they have a target on their back. They have a target on their back. Why is he doing that? Why can't he just send them? Frankly, it doesn't, send, it doesn't sound good to say we're sending 50 anyway, because it's not a very, but why can't he just send them? Why does he have to say, we are sending 50 soldiers? Now these guys, these are not stupid people. Now they're looking for those 50 men and women. It's terrible. It's just terrible. And we have to be unpredictable. We have to do what they think we're not going to do. We have to do that. 
When I said the oil, and you know, I've been saying the oil for three years. Everyone said, oh, you can't do the oil. I said, why can't you do the oil? You're going to take the wealth away. Now, I actually said take the oil when they were going to leave before all of this started, right? Everybody knows that. I was the king of taking the oil. And I don't mean just bombing it. I mean taking it. So then about four months, five months ago, they would say, well, what are you going to do? I don't want to tell you. I'm saying, I don't want to tell you. They said, oh, you don't know the answer. You know these wise guys. You don't know the answer. And by the way, did I win the debate or what? Did we? Right? But, you know, they're wise guys. They're saying, well, you don't know. Maybe you don't know the answer. Maybe you don't know. I say, I know the answer, but I don't want to really tell all these answers because, you know, I have a real chance of getting elected. And if I get elected, I don't want the enemy to know all this stuff, right? But it got so bad. You know, you still have to get there. You still have to get there. So about probably a year ago, I said, take the oil, bomb the oil, take the oil, give some of the oil to the wounded warriors and to the parents of soldiers that are lost, parents of soldiers that were killed in Iraq, give them some. It's peanuts compared to what the value is. Spread it around. Take care of our wounded warriors. Take care of our vets. And take care of families that lost sons and daughters. And what do we end up with? Take care of them. Just take care of them. And, you know, just so sad to see it. And then they all said, I remember Obama had some of the generals commenting on my plan. Oh, that won't work. Well, as soon as Paris happened, they started bombing the oil. This should have been done years ago. But they want to bomb. I want to bomb, but I want to take. I want to bomb, and I want to take. And we'll do a little ring around. It will be just fine. I want to take the oil, okay? But, you know, the, the sad part is that I have to tell everybody what it is, you know, because it's, that's, I guess, the system in which we live. If I don't say that, they'll say, well, Trump doesn't really have a plan. And I really said, I'll never forget, probably six, seven months ago, they were saying, well, what's your plan? I'd rather not tell you. That doesn't play well in a democracy, right? But it, I'd rather not tell you. Oh, please, tell us what it is. You must tell us. Oh, you don't have a plan. So finally, I said, look, you're going to bump. And the, actually, the guy I was telling it to, the announcer, said, that's a good idea. I said, yeah, it's a good idea. Now, you know, Obama didn't want to go full scale in the oil. And this I hear is true. I don't know. Maybe it's hard to believe. Because he didn't want to create environmental pollution. You do know that. He didn't want to bomb the oil because of pollution. Look at Ali's laughing. It's hard to believe, isn't it? It is hard to believe. You know it's a true story. He didn't want to bomb the oil because if you bomb the oil, pollution will go to the atmosphere where it will be thrown away into the system in about two seconds. But Pollution will go up and it'll be. Now, I, I don't know, Al, I don't know if it's 100% true, but I have heard that and I'm not surprised because that's the way we're running things. We don't know what we're doing. So, take the oil, be strong, do all of these things, and we're going to have a country that's going to be so great again. We have to bomb the hell out of them. We have to bring our troops back home. We have to be paid. All these countries, you know, we're protecting. We have a budget that's so many times higher than number two because we're protecting Japan. We're protecting Germany. We're protecting South Korea against the maniac in North Korea. We're protecting Saudi Arabia. Ooh, how wealthy is Saudi Arabia? We're protecting. They, they pay us peanuts. Peanuts. We can change this whole thing around fast. But you have to put a guy like me in, believe me. You have to put a guy like me in. And, and just, okay, are you ready? Here's a quiz. Here's a quiz. You ready? Who's going to pay for the wall? Mexico. Mexico. Mexico's paying for the wall. Now, the politicians come up to me during the debate. One of them came up. Don, you know Mexico's not going to pay for the wall. I said, of course they are. They're making a fortune. We have a trade deficit. You wouldn't believe it. They're making a fortune. They took Ford. They took Nabisco. They're taking all our Of course they're going to pay. That's peanuts. And the wall is peanuts, too. You know, the wall is 1,000. Basically, it's 2,000 miles across. But we only need 1,000 miles of wall, OK? Even less. But let's say 1,000. We want to do a super-duper job, right? We want one that absolutely, we want no wrinkles. But we're going to do a wall. And it's going to be 1,000 miles. So China, right? Great wall of China. China, 2,000 years ago, built a wall that's 13,000 miles long. 13,000. And that wall is seriously big, by the way. You look at that sucker. You're not getting through that one easy. So, we, you know, we have a little better material nowadays, like uh, prefab. They didn't have prefab. They had, they had let's lug stones over there. But China, 2,000 years ago, 
did this incredible job, and they built a 13,000-mile wall. We have 1,000 miles. We can do it so fast, so easy. But the guys, the politicians, have no idea. One of the reasons, you know, it was going to be built, but one of the reasons, this is another environmental story, one of the reasons it didn't get built. Now, here's a wall for security, for safety. One of the reasons it didn't get built is they couldn't get their environmental impact study approved. Can you believe this? Meaning a snake, a tortoise, a snail, something with, I, uh, nobody knows more about environmental impact statements than me, believe me. You gotta get them through, you gotta get them through. Sort of interesting, in the South China Sea, China's building islands, fortresses, they're building runways, military, and they have these massive excavators, massive with buckets half the size of this room, and they're scooping into the ocean. It's the South China Sea. Won't have any impact, believe me, okay? They're digging and throwing and digging, and th they're building these massive islands in the middle of the sea, and we can't do a wall. It's crazy. And I said to a friend of mine from China, I said, let me ask you a question, and I was kidding. How long did it take them to get their environmental income, you know, income statement approved, but to get their environmental statements approved? How long did it take? And he looks at me and says, oh, we don't do that. We don't do that. Let me tell you. They said, let's do it. You know when they started digging? The following day. With this country, it's like, let's go through 20 years of environmental research on a poisonous snake that we want to keep alive, okay? <laughs> so we don't know what we're doing. So we're going to make our country great. It's going to be greater than ever before. We're going to have a good time doing it. New Hampshire, I want to thank you, because from day one, everybody has said that you're with me, and I love you. I love you. I love you. And, and we had a couple events, like two weeks ago in New Hampshire, where the weather was so bad. In fact, my pilot said, no, Mr. Trump, this is something you shouldn't do. What was that? Is that a dog? Uh-oh. It's Hillary. Ah. Uh, only in New Hampshire. That was the first it was the screechy dog, then it was a very serious dog, right? Anyway, that's all right. Take good care of your dogs. But you know, we had a case two weeks ago where the weather was so bad, two or three times up here, so tough, so that I shouldn't have that the pilot said, Well, you probably shouldn't do it. I said, How many people are there? Whatever it was. I said, where is it? It's a corner of New Hampshire. I said, those people have been so good to me. Really genius. Go get it. Go to it. And we landed, we did our thing, and we left. We love New Hampshire, and it's a great honor. Let's take a couple of questions. Go ahead. Where's the mics? Who's got the mics? We'll take some questions. Kevin, let's go. Who's got one? Right here. I know this lady. Good. Hello, Mrs. Carter. Hi. I'm Dee. Hi, Dee. Yeah, I'm right. Right, I remember. Okay. I wanted to ask you, um, what do you think about the fact that I'm going to have all day to do about it, and especially with something crazy like going after people on Social Security? Yeah. 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 They, 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 they want to go after people on Social Security. First of all, Social Security, Social Security. we're going to take, take back, back our jobs, jobs. we're going to make our country rich again, we're going to save your Social Security, Security. We're, we're not doing any cutting. Okay, I'm on that level with the system. You can pay it, you can pay it in your Social Security. Here. And, and as far as the Second Amendment, what I love that question. We, we are, are going, going to protect. We are going to protect our Second Amendment. Nobody's going to touch it. Nobody's going to touch it. One other thing that I was going to mention, you know, they want to move you to the middle of the pack. You know, it's obvious. But there's a big move next time to move you to the middle of the pack. There's a great tradition and history to make which really is the first state in the state 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 Iowa, which is a great people with the caucus. But I will tell you that we are not moving you, and we are not moving Iowa. I win. We are not moving. 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 But there's a big move to move you back into the middle of the pack. It's not going to happen. I win. It's not going to happen. Not going to happen. Zero chance. Okay? Okay. Let's go. Well, many, many different, different people, people, many 
they come from all over and they're all different, but one of the things and one of the groups of people I talk about all the time, I know the greatest business people in the world, the greatest in the world, and we're going to use them for our trade deals now, folks. We're not going to use political hacks. So you end up with this crazy deal for a reason. Thank you, everybody. You are amazing people. 